Use the orange keys to select the fields above. Use both arrow keys to select menu items or change values. Use the escape key to abort a procedure or go back to previously accessed menus. Use the menu key to get back to the main menu. I press the info key to open the instrument diagnosis. Use this key to switch the display illumination on and off. To configure the display, I select the Instrument Settings menu and Display Edit. The measurement parameters and units can be changed by switching the country version. To change the reading display, I select the line I need. I select the measurement parameter and the unit via the Edit key. Here I also have the option of inserting or deleting empty lines. Change the number of lines displayed using the menu item 4 values on display large or 8 values on display small. To save the setting, I select OK Save Input and confirm with OK. The gas path check must be carried out regularly to ensure that the extracted flue gas is not diluted with ambient air and the readings distorted as a result. Before I start the gas path check, I connect the flue gas probe to the Testo 340. Then in the main menu, I select the sub-menu Instrument Diagnosis and then Gas Path Check. The pump flow is shown on the display. Now I put the plastic cap on the tip of the flue gas probe so that its opening is completely covered. If Instrument is Gas Tight appears on the display, I can finish the test by pressing OK. If there is a leak, you can seal the gas inlet using your thumb and carry out the gas path check again. This enables you to check whether the cause is the gas sampling probe or the Testo 340. To create a new customer, I select Main Menu, Memory, New Folder. I assign this folder a number or a name, in this case 123, and confirm with OK Save Input. Now I create a new location. First I assign a system number, in this case Q, save this, and confirm with OK Go to Measurement. Before I begin the measurement, I check whether the correct measuring location is activated. This is shown at the top of the display. To start the measurement, I proceed as follows. I select the measurement type I need in the Measurements menu. Now the zeroing phase starts. Now I come to the fuels. A list is stored with fuels depending on the country version and other fuels can be configured on a customer specific basis. I select the fuel natural gas. Now we need to wait another 10 seconds until zeroing is finished. Now I start the measurement. The readings can be saved in the measurement folder selected, both during the measurement and also at the end. I stop the measurement here. The measurement data can be printed out if required. Use either the Testo Bluetooth printer or, as in this case, the Testo Infrared printer. Press to print out the readings. Make sure that the Testo 340 is in the direct line of sight of the infrared printer. As the condensate consists of a weak mix of acids, skin contact must be avoided when emptying. The condensate trap must not be emptied while the measuring gas pump is running. To empty the condensate trap, I hold the measuring instrument upright so that the condensate outlet is facing upwards. Next I open the drain plug and channel the condensate into a collector. 
I dab off any remaining drops on the condensate outlet with a cloth. I then close the condensate outlet again. The measuring instrument should be heated up for calibration, which is why we recommend switching on the Testo 340 20 minutes beforehand. Also, during the zeroing phase, there must be no interfering gases in the ambient air. First, I select Test Gas in the Fuels menu. In the main menu, I select Sensor Settings and Recalibration. Automatic zeroing is now carried out. Now I select the sensor for the recalibration and enter the required value. In this case, 300 ppm, as indicated on the test gas bottle. I am also asked whether the dilution needs to be zeroed. In this case, I am not calibrating the dilution. The test gas is admitted via the probe tip. Alternatively, the service adapter can also be used. The sensor is now supplied with test gas for three minutes. For this I open the test gas bottle and apply the gas pressureless via a bypass. As soon as the actual value is stable, the value can be saved by pressing OK and the sensor is recalibrated. Before I can replace the sensors, I must switch off the Testo 340 and disconnect it from the mains. To open the instrument cover, I undo the screws. I can then open the clip in the direction of the arrow and remove the service cover. I pull out both hose connections on the left and right of the sensor and remove it. Then I insert the new sensor into the slot and connect the sensor to the hose connections. A slot bridge must be inserted in slots which are not equipped with the sensor. Finally, I put the cover of the sensor compartment back on and close it. After replacing the sensor, another measurement can be carried out straight away without adjusting the sensors again using test gas because the sensors are factory calibrated. Before I can replace the sensor filter from the CO or NO sensor, I must switch off the Testo 340 and disconnect it from the mains. To open the instrument cover, I undo the screws. I can then open the clip in the direction of the arrow and remove the service cover. I pull out both hose connections on the left and right of the sensor and remove the sensor. Now I remove the spent filter from the sensor and put a new one in. When replacing the filter, I need to make sure that all markings match up and I avoid touching the sensor electronics. Then I insert the sensor back into the slot and connect the sensor to the hose connections. Finally, I put the cover of the sensor compartment back on and close it. After replacing the filter, I need to reset the ppm hour counter in the instrument. This is done via the menu item sensor settings, ppm hour counter and then reset. I remove the probe shaft by pressing the probe release. I can then remove the probe. For probe shafts with a pre-filter, this must be unscrewed. The flue gas ducts in the probe shaft and the probe handle can be cleaned out using compressed air. External cleaning is done with a cloth. Brushes should not be used. In order to exchange the particle filter, I open the filter chamber by turning slightly anti-clockwise. I remove the filter disc and replace it with a new one. 
I finally replace the filter chamber and close it. I can clean the Sinter filter with a wire brush. To clean completely, I can use an ultrasound bath or denture cleaners. To reassemble the probe securely, the probe shaft must fully engage onto the probe handle. I use an open end wrench to loosen the screw ring on the probe handle anti-clockwise. The flue gas ducts in the probe shaft and the probe handle can be cleaned out using compressed air. External cleaning is done with a cloth. Brushes should not be used. I can clean the Sinter filter with a wire brush. To clean completely, I can use an ultrasound bath or denture cleaners. I then replace the probe shaft on the probe handle and screw the ring hand tight in clockwise direction with an open end wrench. To replace the rechargeable battery of the Tesla 340, the measuring instrument must be switched off and disconnected from the mains. To open the instrument cover, I undo the screws. I can then open the clip in the direction of the arrow to remove the service cover. To open the battery lock, I press the orange button and slide the rechargeable battery in the direction of the arrow. I can now remove the battery. The new battery must be inserted within 60 minutes so that no data is lost. To insert a new battery, I slide the battery into the guide rail until it clicks into place. Finally, I replace the service cover and close this with both screws.